It's about that time of day again here, folks. Welcome back to Nightly Newsletter, boys and girls. New week, new opportunities. Monday evening, October 5th, 2015. We like to call this Reaction Monday, the Monday after the non-farm payroll report. Remember, there are two very important Mondays to keep an eye out. The Monday after non-farm payrolls and the Monday after quadruple witching, right? That every third Friday of every three months, right? The Monday following quadruple witching as well. Well, this Monday was the Monday following non-farm payrolls. So that's where all the volatility came from. Much safer volatility than the volatility we saw on Friday, right? It really was a challenging uh, uh, price action on non-farm payroll Friday. Now... We get a jam-packed newsletter in store for you guys and gals today. Crude oil is bullish this evening with a spike in channel. So we got a nice spike in channel on crude and a trading range that really is giving us, in my opinion, all the information you really need right now on crude. Uh, the E-mini S&P has a spike in channel of its own. It's also very bullish, which means we're staying patient on the E-mini to wait for that correction before buying more. How about gold? Gold is completely range-bound. We have a bullish bias going into the trading range from last week. And, of course, that means we're looking for fading the breakouts, failures, and we're going to try to focus on the buy side of the lows here on gold. And then how about the euro? The euro is rotational this evening. We'll talk about that in a moment. And we have a clear line in the sand for the sellers at 1220 to keep control on Tuesday's session before these buyers take it right back. So crude, E-mini S&P, gold, euro, we get a great plan for you guys, and we're going to go over charts in two and a half seconds here. I do want to remind you, though, make sure you're watching our video on our trading blog here at Sideways Markets. If you're watching the video on our YouTube channel, that's perfectly fine, but I think you might want to go into the description of that video, follow that link, and come over and watch it with me on the trading blog here at Sideways Markets. There are a few different reasons. Upper left-hand corner, you can grab a free pass. If you're not a member of School of Trade and you'd like a free pass into our trade room, grab your free pass, upper left-hand corner. Lower left-hand corner, you can join our nightly newsletter mailing list. Just make sure you give me your name and your email address, and then make sure to check your inbox because I'm going to send you a verification email. Right below the video tonight, you can download all the charts you're going to see on tonight's video. How nice is that? Download the charts right below the video on our blog. And then over on the right-hand side, you can learn more about becoming a trial member, right? Take a lot of pride in the fact we have the best free trial on the planet. You can learn more about what it means to be a member. You can also read some real member reviews down there as well. And, of course, I've always got someone standing by 24-7, 365, to give you guys any answers that you may need to have or any, any answer to your questions. Alrighty, I think we got our who, what, where, when, and why. Don't forget, grab your charts, pull the video, register for the newsletter, and grab your free pass. Let's jump right in here, guys. Excited to be back. We got a week filled with opportunities here. It's great to be a trader going into the month of October. Let's start out here with crude oil. Don't forget, we're on the 11-15 until about halfway through the month of October. 17th, 18th of October, we'll start looking at rollover on crude. Crude's a monthly rollover, so we got to keep up with that. We got a few weeks, though, on this 11-15 contract on crude oil. Crude oil is bullish this evening with a spike in channel and a trading range for tomorrow's session. Our plan is pretty simple. The spike in channel tells us, look to the long side, but be patient for the deep correction. The range that we see gives us a great area of support. I'm looking at you, 4571, before we start really getting excited about some buying opportunities here on crude. So let's break this into the two big components that I see on this chart right now, starting out with the very obvious bullish tone to today's market. We focused on nothing but buy-in here today on crude. We saw right out the gate a bull spike in channel. That bull spike in channel tells you the best opportunity is going to come after a measured correction. Usually that measured correction goes right about the beginning of that channel, right? You guys are you guys are experts on this stuff now, right? We know we know exactly how to trade a spike in channel, right? Spike up, channel up. How do I trade it? Well, typically what happens is you see a correction back to the beginning of the channel. 
The other milestone is the beginning of the spike, right? That'd be the failure. But we know, though, that as these buyers are going, a spike in channel is created because of strength. Fully committed buyers in the market. The only way to get a nice, juicy buying opportunity now, again, nice measured correction into the base of the channel, followed by seller failure and our next buying opportunity. The most important thing to remember about a spike in channel is don't let the correction fool you. And we know the correction, again, will typically go back to the beginning of the channel. Spike up, channel out, measured correction, down to the base of the channel. Then look for seller failure and buy it right back up. Wait patiently and don't get fooled by this correction. That's one of the hardest parts to learn about a spike in channel. Now, the second important component that I see on this is the trading range. We jump up, we go sideways. I'll teach you guys how to define the trading ranges here at School of Trades inside your intermediate course. Okay, if you're a client of mine, you know exactly how to find those ranges. There's definitely a bullish bias to it. You can see we're bullish. Then we start going sideways here. And you can see they're holding below the moving average very well right now. So that definitely lends credibility to the sell side. But remember, we're not going to be bearish on this sucker until we really can get back below that 45.71, right? We're bullish here during this correction. And so now, second component, take that trading range. Take the trading range, copy and paste it higher, copy and paste it lower, and now you're starting to see why I really think we got some great information here on crude going into tomorrow's session. 45.71 looks to be a very healthy area of support. It'll, it'll be a double area for us. It's going to be the high of the range expansion. It's also the base of that channel, right? So line them up, knock them down. All we got to do is wait patiently for that price to pull back to 71. And then we're looking for those sellers to fail so we can be buying here. If they don't, then you can expect a retest of the beginning of the spike, which will put us right back in. If that's the case, then this will become one big trading range, right? So if we end up filling all the way down, this will end up being one big range and you'll have to come out and see me in real time tomorrow and get more information on that. So right now, two main components. The bull spike in channel says don't get fooled by the correction. Be patient for the base of that channel. The trading range that we see tells us be looking to buy the lows of the range or wait for the expansion down and then right back into the range, right? Fade the breakouts and fade the seller breakouts, right? Fade the sell, bring it back up. We also know the failure target on this is back around that 45.21. That's where the beginning of that spike and channel occurred. All righty? Keep an eye on the measured correction as we go into the middle portion of tomorrow. That's going to be where you're really going to get the, the correct information. Got to stay patient in this one for tomorrow. And don't forget, we'll be trading that crude market tomorrow morning in real time. You know us. School of Trade, and our trade room opening up at 8 o'clock in the morning. How about the S&P 500? How about the S&P 500? Just a little bit of bullishness here. Just a little bit of bullishness, right? We talked about it last week. Remember we said earlier, well, not earlier, but last week going into non-farm payrolls, right? We gave you guys that 1930 area. My plan was to sell it first. We got the sell off it on Friday, and then Bam, right back up above it. That was a line in the sand. And so we knew that was the that was the green light to be bulls. And this was a classic example. We talked about this today in the trade room. This is a classic example of bad news being good news. Why did such a bad jobs report from Friday result in prices going higher? Because think about it. What did a bad jobs report really tell us? We're not going to likely get interest rates to be hiked this year. That's what everyone loved about this. Remember, the Federal Reserve, their job is to take away the punch bowl, right? Janet Yellen's job 
is to provide, right, we call it the punch bowl because, you know, the punch bowl's got alcohol. Alcohol gets everybody loosey-goosey, right? The free money, the stimulus packages. So the Federal Reserve Bank, right, the Fed, the FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee, they're responsible for managing interest rates. So we have this rumor flying around that we could possibly see interest rates go up. Well, what happens if we see interest rates go up? The money slows down, right? There's, there's, there isn't an easy money. Okay, mortgage rates go up, credit card rates go up, student loans go up. Everything goes more expensive now. And in theory, right, obviously this is all in theory, but in theory, a bad jobs report says there's less likelihood of that happening. In comes free money, easy money, cheap money. And that, of course, is now why the market read the bad jobs report as good news for equities. It's a crazy little game we play, isn't it? Well, remember, we don't technically need to care about that because all I need to understand is right on this chart right now. But if you were happen to be wondering why did this market react so bullishly to that, it's because this is a scenario where bad news is good news. The lack of a strong jobs report on Friday said there's a lower probability of the Fed raising rates. That means cheap money keeps going on. That means the party keeps going, turn the music up, fill the punch bowl back up, let's party. And that's what the Wall Street traders are thinking. And when you're looking at the S&P 500, you know, you know what this is. This is a hedging instrument for major financial institutions who have a lot of money in U.S. equities, right? You're not making this your number one bird. This is your hedge. And so that's why this market blew up to the upside. Okay, so now you know the bad news is good news. That's what produced it. Do we really care? I mean, do we really need to know that? We really don't need to. Let's be honest. We don't really need to know why. All we get to know is what you're seeing on this chart. That's the beautiful part about technical analysis is that I don't need to understand all that, right? If you're curious, I'll tell it to you why it's happening, but you really don't need to. Here's what I do need to know about the S&P. The S&P is bullish. Just like crude, it too has its own spike and channel of its own which means we're staying patient for the correction. What will cap a correction? A measured correction back to where? The base of the spike in channel, right? The base of the channel, mm-hmm, see? Yeah, I see, stick around here for a few more weeks. I mean, you too will be an expert on these spike in channels. This really has been the year of the old spike in Chanel, right? So the spike in channel tells us to wait for a deep correction. See the spike? It's really easy to see it. You can't really draw the channel very well unless you see the spike in channel. And that's the way that I teach it. I teach the spike in channel to our students here at School of Trade by reminding people to look for those big runs. Usually this comes after news. Okay, usually comes after news. And really what gives away a spike in channel is there's no other way to draw the channel. There's no other way to, to analyze it. There's no other, there's nothing else to do. The, 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 the spike in channel is, in my opinion, the way to kind of bridge the gap between everything else that you're looking for, right? It's that oddball. Say, oh, okay, there's a spike in channel. And once you know to look for it, it just really screams at you. Okay, so spike in channel, there were two milestones, right, with a spike in channel. What were they? The key areas here, you've got the spike in channel correction, and then, of course, you've got the complete spike in channel failure, right? Those are the two areas you want to be remembering. Now, don't get me wrong. We want to stay to the bull side, but usually what happens on a spike in channel is that all the buyers are already engaged. Whenever I think about a spike in channel, I think of a poker game where all the chips are in the middle. The only way people keep anteing up is to cash their chips out. And how are these buyers going to cash out their chips? They're going to have to start selling. Then, in order to entice some more buyers, you're going to have to get price that goes lower, right? Supply and demand. If I want to get into the best buying opportunity, remember... I'm a trader just like you are. I can't predict the future, but I will tell you where the highest probability trades are going to be. In a bullish market, right, measured corrections off those highs are always going to be where you find the highest probability trades. The key is, is on a spike in channel, is not forgetting about the spike in channel. What usually happens is by the time you get this correction back lower, everybody's starting to drink the bear Kool-Aid now. People forget we're in a bullish market 
And that's exactly why it becomes a challenging pattern to trade. Is because by the time you remember this is a bullish market, oftentimes you're getting stopped out like everybody else who forgot about it earlier, right? So stay patient for that deep correction. Where would that correction likely go? Well, typically a spike in channel correction goes back to the base of the channel. So we may see it really dig in as far back as this uh, 1960, 1955. And again, that's going to feel very bearish. And it should feel very bearish. That's the point, right? You should know better than that by now, right? You know that right when you get uncomfortable is right when you're on the right track, right? That's, these markets are challenging like that. They're not going to make it that easy. They're not going to give you a big neon sign saying, okay, ready to buy? Get ready. They're not going to say that to us. They're going to make us think we should be selling, and that's when we want to be buying. I know it's a tricky game, but that's why we get paid so well. This is what causes some very, very intelligent people to go broke in the financial markets because they think they can just wing it. They think the intelligence that got them to be a heart surgeon or got them to be an engineer or put them through law school, they think that that same intelligence is necessary. What you need is experience. You need experience and you can cut that experience curve down by learning from somebody who already has the experience. It's pretty darn simple, isn't it? So we're going to stay patient for that correction right now. Now, the one thing that I want, I, this is very similar again to crude oil, is we have that trading range. Okay, now this, I'm, I'm kind of reaching on this one, right? This, as you can see, this is a bullish market. So in all reality, the only reason why I have that trading range on there is because look at where we stopped. Are, you gonna, are, are we going to argue about that, right? Take the trading range, copy and paste it up. I mean, look where we stopped. So that tells me that this area right here, and this is a really important spot because now you can see a measured correction back down. I also am kind of flirting with this, you know, untested possible, right? We have a major multi-tiered channel here. I'm not quite convinced of that channel being there yet, right? But I do know one, one thing's for sure, that 1960 area, 1958 area is going to be significant support for you buyers. That's where you want to be looking for seller failure. Remember, after we get a correction, the first opportunity to be a buyer tomorrow is going to be seller failure. It's not going to be a buying opportunity. Oh, it's going to, it's going to end up being a buying opportunity, but it's going to be seller failure. Sellers trying to go short because they think big pops are equal to big drops, and they might be. But the higher probability trade is to buy right into those stop losses. Then you can start looking for those pullback trades afterwards. So the earliest opportunity tomorrow is going to be seller failure, seller failure to be a buyer here, right? And again, we'll be trading this market live in real time tomorrow as well. Shall we keep going? We got a much easier chart here on gold. You know, I talked about this last night. I, I had some fun with you guys last week on my newsletter talking about, right, when I, when I do go off to that trading, uh, that, that trading floor in the sky, right, I hope they put me in a range-bound market because the range-bound markets, they're just the easiest ones. They really are. There's really no question whatsoever until we see a dramatic break and continuation. Here you go. Here is a range-bound market for you. Mwah! Just delicious. These things are, I don't want to say the word easy, right? but they sure aren't very difficult. The key is, is question every breakout. Now, I'm gonna do something here that I don't do very often. I'm gonna go back to last week. Yeah, you probably noticed that by now. I don't really like to go back to the week before. In my opinion, it's the lazy way to do it. Use the current information. It's the most reliable. And remember, a lot happens between Friday at five and Monday at 5, right? A lot happens. So, I mean, is there any doubt about that, right? Again, there's your bad news is good news right there. That bad news for the jobs report, lickety split, right? Gold just takes off. No real surprise there. Bad jobs, bad jobs report, you're expecting gold to rise. Not a surprise. So that then sends us into this bullish trading range. But again, I'm telling you right now, though, uh, I'm really hesitant to call that a bullish range bias. But 
you know, I, I really, we have to. We, we don't have much of a choice on that one. We really have to call it a bullish bias to trading range. This is one of those examples where I know other traders are going to be bullish on this market because of that bullish bias going in. So this is that time when I say it doesn't help to be the only right person in the room. By default, if I'm the only person in the room that thinks he's right, I'm by default wrong. Can we all agree on that? It's the same idea where they say a million people simply can't be wrong. They can't. You know, the sheer size means they are correct. This is an example where the vast majority of traders are going to see the bad news as good news. They're going to see that trading range after the bull run up. This is a bullish bias range. I hate it. I'm kicking and screaming. But hey, guess what? I rely on you guys. You guys rely on me. We all rely on each other to make this technical analysis, self-fulfilling, prophesizing stuff work. Okay? Now, back to real work. Done having fun. Gold is range bound with a bullish bias, <clears throat> right? Like we just talked about. So we know the bad news is good news, push the price higher, yada, 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 which means we're looking to fade the breakouts this week until something changes. The most important thing to remember is to be suspicious of all breakouts. Guys, like I said, these markets were built to make you uncomfortable, right? When you think that these buyers are in control, we're going to get them to fail back in. Right when you think that these sellers, oh, they can't, they're, they're really in control now. Nope, they're going to come right back up. Okay, so you got to be suspicious. Just when you feel uncomfortable. You see why I'm saying that? Uncomfortable. It, I'm, I'm trying to say it with emphasizing it, right? <laughs> I'm trying to have some fun with you because there's not a lot to talk about on this. I got I to gotta find something to have fun with. There's not a lot to talk about. Fade the breakouts. How do we fade the breakouts? Failures, 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 right? Okay, so where we're looking for failure? I, I don't know. Measured move up? I, I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you where we're going to get the failure at, but that's a good place to start. 1143.8. We go up, buyer failure, sell it back down. I'll teach you how to do it. It's in my advanced course. We go down. A, B, C, D, right? This may not be intact for tomorrow, right? I would expect this to be broken down a little bit for tomorrow. We go down, seller failure, whoop, right back up. Okay, there's a gun to my head. JJ, which side are you on, man? You're either with us or you're against us. Which side are you on? I got to be on the bull side. Why? Because the bad news is good news. Because we have a bullish bias, right? So if somebody put a gun to my head, and I, I hate guns. I, I really shouldn't use the analogy. But if somebody said, you've got to choose, you're either bullish or bearish, what you got? Um, I've got to go bearish. I, I'm sorry, got to go bullish. Which means the ideal scenario is measured move down, sellers, mm, 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 failure, buy, right? Buy right into their stop losses. Take your profit off at the 50, 35, 7, and the 100 range, 41, 4. Okay. If we go higher, though, that's where you want to look for sellers to fail the rotation back in. So I'm going to be looking to sell it. I will be. All right. If I don't get the trigger on it, because what will likely happen is, is we may just not be able to really get the trigger. Then what you're looking for is, is those sellers to fail and buy it, right? You're basically buying a failed breakout failure right? I know, right? It could be a little bit easier to describe, but you're expecting a failure at the high. If that doesn't happen, you're buying that failed failure. Yeah, I know. I know. It's almost as crazy as it sounds. It is, but you're, that's the way you stay to the bullish side. You're expecting a failure at the high. Wait for the failure to fail. We'll be watching for that live in real time tomorrow. This gold should be a piece of cake. Hardest part right now is staying patient, going to the highs and going to the lows, fade those breakouts on gold and stay the heck away from the middle. Now, I saved the best for last. Here's the euro. The euro is by far the most challenging chart of the evening. Not much of a surprise there because this market should be a little bit dizzy based on what's happened over the past week and a half. Completely range bound. Again, I'm not even going back to look at last week's range. It's old news. Get over it. Don't be lazy. Make yourself understand what's happening right now. But we're in a big long term. Okay, that's great. I understand that. Are you trying to be an analyzer or a trader? 
What do you want? You can do all the analysis you want, but you don't make any money doing analysis. So if you want to be a trader, use the most recent information. The problem is, if I go look left right now, I get all lazy. There's all this stuff to worry about then, and I can easily find ways not to trade. This requires me now. It literally <clears throat> pushes me into the pool. i got to learn to swim. Okay, it's why we rely on just this week. You're going to see what this thing wants to do starting this week. Okay, let's keep going. Here's why the euro is so challenging. The euro is rotational. At the same time, it has a bearish spike in channel. There are two very big clues on this. First of all is the spike in channel. You can see that. See, I told you. Stick around. You're going to be an expert just like all the students here at School of Trade about spiking channels. Guys, what does a bear spike in channel tell me? The sellers are fully committed, right? It tells me the sellers are fully committed. What does that mean? That means the poker table, right? All the chips are in the middle. Oh, you're getting good at this. Okay, so how, does the, how do the bears, how do they get back in then? They got to cash out their chips. What does cashing out their chips mean? They got to buy their way out, right? Take their profit, measured Correction. Correction where? Oh, you're good. Back to the beginning of the channel. Look at it, right? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. It's actually not perfect. Because you know how a spike in channel is supposed to act now, right? And the record goes, wah, wah, wah. there's more? Oh, <laughs> oh, yes, there's more. There's a trading range we have to worry about here right now. Now, this is one of my favorite types of environments, a rotational right, a rotational environment. This comes off of the very simple idea that the market went up and then just, bam, right, rotates and right to the lows we go. Sellers try once, sellers try twice. That means these guys mean business, but we're at the end of the day. And that's where we get our trading range, right there. That's why this 1220 area is so particularly important because we have now, put it all together, we have a trading range where we've rotated from high down to low and it looks like, mm -hmm, it looks like the sellers have it, doesn't it? It does, but that should tell you something. If you're saying right now, absolutely, I agree. It looks like the sellers got it. All oh, right, see, there's your clue. Back, right, you should be suspicious of that, of that, of that, that certainty, right? Remember, that uncomfortable feeling is the right place to be. Get out of that comfort zone. So, now we know that right now, as long as we're below 1220, we are bearish. It's a rotational environment. Once we get back above 1220, well. Now we go back into the range, and now, whoop, right? Now we're back in range rotation mode. Now this is nothing more than a fake-out breakout. Okay. Now that we have the rotation and the spike in channel, now you can see the challenge we go in tomorrow. This is going to be a tough day for the euro tomorrow, most likely. Well, it could be really easy if it just fails. If it just fails, it's very easy. We're going higher. We'll get back to the highs, and we'll try to look to sell it back to the lows, buy it, so on and so forth. What should happen, though, is is we should see a measured correction putting us back into that channel. I'm sorry, back into the range. And then here's the problem. We're going to have to get and stay below that 1220 for these sellers to take control. All right, guys, almost the worst thing that could happen tomorrow is if we just go straight down. Because then you're going to stay patient for a measured correction back up and then just watch closely to see what happens. Okay, I would honestly rather just go right up, fail, and bam, right back in. That's going to be the easy money. right? Sellers fail to keep it below 1220 and they buy. Okay, Simple as that. But if we don't, if we get stuck around here, that's where you're going to see the big challenge for all you Euro traders. Tomorrow has potential to be either a really easy day or a really difficult day on the Euro. If it goes lower, you know they're going to try to run this thing back up before sending it lower. That's what you want to wait for if it just takes off to the downside. 
Then if it gets stuck above 1220, you got to be a buyer back up. But I'm telling you, it's probably not going to be that easy tomorrow on that euro. We'll be trading this market, watching over that tomorrow as well. Wrapping things up here on our nightly newsletter. Now you guys have a plan. Range bound on gold, bullish on the crude and the S&P, and a little bit of a curveball there on the old euro. Before I let you guys go, I do want to thank you once again for being a part of the newsletter. Don't forget to share this with a friend, right? They'll thank you for it. Also, if you have some free moments this afternoon, this evening, check out our free trial here at School of Trade. It's the best in the business. I take a lot of pride in the fact that you're going to learn more with me on, on my free trial than anywhere else on the interwebs. And while you're here, learn more about our beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels of membership. And we always have someone standing by 24-7, 365 to give you guys a hand. Guys, before I go, I want to remind you that being a successful trader is like being successful in anything else in this life. It's like opening up a combination lock. It's not enough to have the numbers. You've got to have the sequence of the numbers. Whether you're brand new to this industry or you already know the numbers, but you're still trying to get that sequence down, I look forward to the opportunity to share that ticket to freedom that we're all working so hard for here in this day trading industry. Guys and gals, my name is Joseph. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the great questions and comments and support. Trade Room opens up tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. You know where to find me. If not, tomorrow afternoon, we'll do it all over again around 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Be well out there. Be nice to each other. And be here tomorrow. Have a great one, guys and gals. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.